Hello, my name is Andrei Kulikov, still. <laughs> and I, in this video, I'd like to show how to work with object data in XGBoost without complex coding for transforming data into numerical format. It is very important uh, part of machine learning process. <clears throat> so, uh, in Kaggle, I have a data set. Data set. It is simple where um, can be seen flight delays. Or it, or the, the depends on uh, some data months, day of month, um, day of week, uh, departure time, unique uh, carrier origin, destination, distance, and uh, delay, uh, yes or not, one or zero. So let's close it. And I'll use gradient boosting or XG boost. So what is the main idea of it? The term gradient boosting comes from the idea of boosting or improving a single weak model by combining it with a number of other weak models in order to generate a collectively strong model. Gradient boosting is an extension of boosting where the process of, or of generating weak models is formalized as a gradient descent algorithm over an objective function. Complex, but it works. Uh, many engineers use XGBoost because it shows best results in different cases. So uh, the data set features. So then I load some um, models, where is XGBoost? Uh, for cross validation score, confusion metrics for plots, so and for grid search and uh, train test splits model. So uh, I load uh, the data of, from CSV file. Here is its head. No, yes, and some data, and at test data also there is no uh, target column feature. So uh, first of all, I'll check uh, the uh, missing values with this uh, code. It is zero. There are no missing values. So then I prepare my uh, data set for x and y and uh, target y y y and uh, then i check what uh, object uh, data i have in what columns and i see this that they are in six of them and it, it it's a, a, a big job to uh, make it uh, ready for machine learning because uh, usually the protocols work with uh, digit with numerical data so uh, it we must transfer it to numerical by one numerical numerical by one hot encoding or dropping it or simple coding. Uh, for large data set with many rows, one hot encoding can greatly expand the size of the data set. For this reason, we typically only one hot encode columns with relatively low cardinality. Then high cardinality columns uh, can either be dropped from the data set or we can use original encoding. But there is the way I found it today, uh, occasionally, um, to pass categorical data into 
XGBoost, here is the link. So, first of all, we have to, uh, to transform it to category and then uh, put this code, uh, enable categorical true, and, and that's all. No big coding, and coding, uh, checking uh, some cardinality, low cardinality. Oh. So, next I transform the targets uh, column yes to one and no to zero. And I do this uh, code from here. That way. When I did it that way in uh, uh, Jupiter, it didn't work. So, so I did it. That way, when I check the types, it uh, tells me that they have category and it works with in int well. I did not uh, transform it to category. So then split. Then uh, the same thing I did with the test data for what, but I did. And then I start the, this code. It's uh, to check it. I, uh, for example, I from the saved module CL, CLF, I uh, took uh, feature Im importances. The fourth is uh, the most important feature. Uh, okay, but we, if we have a uh, not n n numerical data, we should uh, delete some row, some columns with uh, low feature importance. If we have, for example, hundreds of the, of them, but here we do not need <clears throat> need to do this. Um, and I can predict from my t test data and for example the prediction from uh, 48 row it gives me one so I, I, I've got a score in Kaggle it is an important uh, value and uh, scores mean and I, I get uh, the confusion matrix in in this I can see uh, the following thing um, so what is a confusion matrix in y axis it is actual condition and x axis is predicted condition we have to uh to be here uh data no sorry it is good when data is only here and here this is ne uh, false uh, positive or false negative data so uh, i see that i have low uh, positive data and it's uh, the result of uh, of it uh, very influent on uh, the quality of prediction. It is better to have uh, the same amount of data for zero and and one. There are some methods to improve this, but I do not use it here. So I see that uh, positive uh, few yes uh, and uh, and uh, the amount of true positive and uh, false negatives is about three percent. True positive, yes, true positive, false negative, false positive. Okay, so and um, le here I used uh, some grid search to search for best uh, hyper 
parameters and it's not the target of this video but it, it was an experiment and and it gave me the best parameters that are written here and I uh, then use them in my model but uh, best parameters also sh showed me the same value of score of and scores mean why I don't know it's not the target of this video <laughs> so and I at, and at the end of this code I tried to I loaded uh, 10 uh, flights where uh, the departure delay is yes to check works it or not and it, it works but not good uh, it it is because of the data preparation for uh, two classes where the where one class is much uh, b bigger in, in amount than the second class so I uh, transferred it uh, somewhere into category uh, here and then I uh, dropped this uh, column and then I predicted so, so I, ha I was waiting that I'll have ones only here but I've got only one so it works not good <laughs> but the uh, it um, works uh, well for not to transform the data into numerical format i'll continue exp experimenting with this thank you for watching bye see you later